Hey everybody, I'm Daniel from Space Dock and I'm joined by Alistair. Hello, I'm Alistair. And we've just watched the massively successful Chinese blockbuster sci-fi movie, The Wandering Earth. Or as I thought of it as wondering what on earth was going on during the entire movie. Yes, the movie was, to say the least, truly lunatic. It was one of the most bizarre, insane premises for a film I've ever seen. (laughs) And uh, we're going to talk about it now because I think uh, think it bears shining a light on... The, the true madness contained within this movie. Yeah, so the, the premise is the, 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 the sun is expanding. It seemed like something that's supposed to happen like 150 million years in the future. More than that, yeah. yeah but but, yeah. but um, the, in this movie, it's happening in 100 years' time. Uh, it's never explained why. Uh, it's, it's, never just gonna, it's just going to expand in 100 years and don't think about it. So the plan for that was they made they, they put engines all around the surface of Earth. To o- pro- obviously. <laughs> to, to, to propel it starkiller base style away from the solar system to relative safety. Their plan in the face of the sun expanding is to build 10,000 huge fusion engines on Earth. All of which have underground cities beneath them. And then evacuate everyone into those underground cities... And then fire the engines to fly the Earth like a spaceship um, for 2,500 years uh-huh. to Proxima Centauri at, at sublight speed. So they also want to do some gravity assists, but they're basically flying it. They're, apparently, there are, there are larger engines on the Earth's equator that they call torque drives. At the end of the film, they say that they're, they're, the reason they exist is to stop the Earth's rotation. The effects of moving the Earth like this... The effects that it would have, gravitationally speaking, to the people on it, are never, never visualised in this film. Everyone just carries walking around the Earth as if nothing's happening. Yeah, if they're constantly <laughs> under that kind of acceleration, either like on one side of the Earth they'd be experiencing like a much higher acceleration due to gravity yeah. and thrust, and the other side they'd be like flying away from the, Beijing yeah, film, film never into touches the on this. sky. The film <laughs> never bothers with any of this. Everyone is still in like normal Earth gravity situation yeah. the world over, and it's just fine. I mean, I'm not an astrophysicist, but I'm going to I'm going to assume that the imp- that the implications of doing something like this would be far more severe than what is portrayed here. <laughs> yeah. It's like they're still driving around in lorries on this planet while it's flying through the solar system. Um, I, I, I imagine the uh, it, you basically the planet would be stunningly kaput after a second of, of, <laughs> of flying in this way. So Stop yeah, they, they enter the uh, gravitational field of Jupiter. Their, their plan is to do a slingshot maneuver around Jupiter That's right. to accelerate them out of the system. All the engines break. Which conveniently puts them in a place where they enter this like trajectory course with, with Jupiter. They're going to hit it. They're going to they're 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 fly Jupiter into it. If they don't get their uh, engines back online. Now, first, first of all, if they were in any kind of position to do like an extra solar slingshot maneuver, there's no way that they would hit it if they lost power. They'd just keep going because yeah, they've got yeah. like huge momentum, but that's way beyond this film's uh, kind of consideration. <laughs> well, like 1,300 engines break out of 10,000. So, something, something like that, like that. In, in that degree. So they send out all of these teams across the entire planet to take the, what are they called? Like light? The, the lighter cores. Lighter cores. Which seem to be fu- like tiny fusion reactors that need to be dropped into the engines to turn them back on. Yeah. But apparently none of these are kept anywhere near the engines. They're kept in, like, garages and have to be driven around in lorries <laughs> to uh, to get them there. So we can have harrowing day-after-tomorrow sequences where they drive the uh, the lighter cores to where they need to be. Yeah. My God, like, miscellaneous, completely blank characters that I that I can't remember anything about. Oh, uh, there's, like, the generic army characters which are supposed to be doing this, and then the characters in the red suits, which is, like, there's, like, the, the bloke and his sister and his granddad off in some, like, who family Who just happened just... to be in the area when, when this all happened. Yeah, like, they were in prison because they wanted a little... There's also the incredibly uh, like tasteless Australian character who is inserted for no discernible reason <laughs> uh, who is like his character is essentially a, a, a sexual assault joke <laughs> that is deployed early on to a, a resounding it's oh like, from the audience never touched upon again <laughs> never touched upon again and then he just behaves like a total wazak for the entire film and does he die at the end okay. oh, God, don't so, I, I'm not going to warn any of you about spoilers because this film is God awful, and you shouldn't care. Yeah, I don't. I can't remember what happens to him. It doesn't matter. Doesn't none, matter. none of the characters matter. None of the characters have any personality at all. Incredibly belaboured bits of dialogue from earlier in the film yeah, try yeah. to be emotional and powerful, and they do it so much that almost fifty percent of the film is a speech in slow motion. And it's just like it's just painful, painful to sit through. I like the bit where they're where they're driving along, and uh, what 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 happens? Does, does a character die or something? Like one of, one of the uh, one of the guys in black armor, one of the uh, military guys. Oh, are you talking about the moment early on? The, the, the first moment when this film goes from from 
being completely mental to, to being like truly, baffling truly on insane. every every level. One of the marines they have with them, like her compatriot, freezes to death while they're towing this reactor that they need to reignite the engines to save everyone on Earth. And after her friend freezes to death, she, in a fit of anger, shoots and breaks the uh, the reactor that they need. The thing they need to, to save, save the world, all of humanity. <laughs> and every- some, like like some like there's some glory moment. <laughs> yeah. Quite understandably, everyone around her says, "What the hell like, was that? What are you doing?" <laughs> like- but luckily, this moment of of intense drama from everything being completely screwed because of this one woman is uh, is immediately diffused from the fact that they just have a spare one in a van and that nobody <laughs> mentioned. But it turns out they don't even need the spare one because somebody off screen fixes all the engines and the world. So our, none of our none of our main characters are have, at all involved in in like resolving that problem. It just resolves itself. Oh yeah, now half the things they're trying to do during the main sh- like the entire movie are completely irrelevant. <laughs> yeah, none of it matters in the end. Basically, only one character that we actually follow is directly involved in the like events that actually transpire in any way. And, and it's the that- Russian guy. Obviously. Yeah, but well, so, so I should explain. There's a B plot running along this where uh, two characters, a Russian bloke and uh, our main character's dad, are on what they they call it the International Space Station. But it looks it's like, like it's uh, leading ahead of the planet. Yeah, it looks like the Icarus from Sunshine for some reason. It's not is a, it's, ever they call explained it, why uh, they have this thing going ahead of the planet. Well, sort of. They, they call it a station, but it's a ship. And it looks like the Icarus from Sunshine. And I guess it's like uh, scouting ahead yeah. of the Earth the, or something. The, the, the twist is that that's like the contingency plan. They have a whole yeah, bunch of like, the, human the, embryos like lined in this thing so they could repopulate the, the humanity. Twi- it's, it's the exact twist from Interstellar. Because somebody what making this film saw Interstellar. And uh, so the, the, the ship that's flying ahead of them is actually carrying all these embryos. There's, there was always thought that the Earth might crash into Jupiter... So there was always a backup plan for this ship, that. this ship to make it there and deploy all these embryos on whatever planet they find. So there's this whole thing where his dad's going through the space station to try and get to like the control center so that when he finds out that the Earth is like doomed, he can stop the space station yeah, for some reason. That ma- made no sense. <laughs> so uh, one, of the characters, one of the characters on the space station discovers this contingency plan. And is angry about it because it, it means they're, they're uh, well, I guess they're saving people. But, I mean, they're not deliberately leaving the Earth to die. It just no, happened. No, no. <laughs> they're saving as what people they can. But he's angry about this for some reason. Apparently, saving these embryos is, is considered to just be wrong by, by the characters. Yeah. And he eventually kills them all. He, uh, <laughs> he throws some vodka that was illegally brought onto the ship onto all of the embryos and they catch fire and he kills them all that's, that's what happens there that's what happens in the movie uh, so uh, all he's really done by that is remove the fail safe so now now saving the earth is the only way to save humanity oh yeah because that, that that all comes about because they come up with this like this insane okay. plan after, okay yeah okay yeah <laughs> so get to the mental mental <laughs> so. did you think this couldn't get any more mad the, the uh, so halfway through the film they um the lighter cause of like they've they've ignited all the engines again but they're past the Roche point and they can't uh, arrest their momentum they're going to hit Jupiter it was too late mm. there's this melancholy moment and then one of our characters who is like a 14 year old truck driver's son with no scientific knowledge at all has this moment of revelation where the music builds and he says I know how we can save the day we just need to ignite Jupiter <laughs> and then we'll use the shockwave from igniting Jupiter to push Earth out of the solar system and everyone says good idea <laughs> this, great plan yeah so this is what they're doing now this is what the, what the plan is they're going to ignite Jupiter the apex of the entire movie <laughs> when all hope seems lost this character who for the entire reason the entire movie is carrying around a shoulder slung minigun for apparently no reason whatsoever gets frustrated and shoots at Jupiter <laughs> Ra- <laughs> raises sun- his gun to Jupiter in the sky shouts screw you Jupiter <laughs> And fires repeatedly into the sky. And this is supposed to be like a powerful emotional moment as he screams, screw you Jupiter, and empties his clips into the air. And everyone sort of looks around and there's tears and it's like, oh my god, it can't get any worse than this. But it's okay, because they're just going to ignite Jupiter, as you do. The end of the film largely centers around pushing a big fuel rod into a uh, reactor so they can fire this big fusion beam. Mm. But it turns out the beam doesn't actually reach far enough to ignite Jupiter, 
So the character's dad on the space station, which isn't a space station, has to careen the space station yeah, into the is, gas. Is forced to uh, to ignite it. Is forced to blow himself up because the fuel explosion from his ship exploding is apparently going to reach Jupiter and light it, which seems to su- suggest that his ship runs on fuel that was sent from God yeah. or something <laughs> and can cause like explosions several orders of magnitude larger than the Earth. Like this is the point where you start to question why why anything in the film mattered because he uses the tip of this beam to blow his ship up and explode and that explosion from his ship lights Jupiter. Mm. Surely there's another like it doesn't need that beam to blow his ship up. He could have blown his ship up in any way he wanted. So the the 70,000 mile tall plasma beam that our characters spent the whole film making is seem, seems to be completely redundant to whether or not they save the day. Uh, we could have just watched the, the protagonist's dad sit in a swivel chair for two hours and then kill himself, and the end result would have been exactly the same. It, this film is is so rapidly edited and so not completely bereft of logic. It, going on. It, it, it's, and yeah. it's astonishing, first of all, that like igniting all of Jupiter through this gas trail and then blasting the Earth all at once back on the right trajectory wouldn't just immediately vaporize yeah, all everyone's, life. Yeah, everyone's fine. That was on yeah. the planet. When, the, uh, <laughs> when it's the, like, the planet gets hit by Jupiter, <laughs> everyone's okay. There's a part where two of our characters are in a lorry. They run out of the back of the lorry into the front of the lorry, and the back of the lorry gets hit by Jupiter, but they're okay because they weren't in that bit. I can only suggest that you that you watch this film and and see for yourself because it can't be it can't be put into words. It needs to be experienced. It. There were there yeah. were people that knew what they were talking about, and then there was a crazy, insane man <laughs> Who, at, at the helm telling everyone what to do. I think this was based on a novel. I have no idea if the novel was was just as mad, or if uh, or if that's all a result. Of that. I imagine the novel probably at least took the took the time to explain what it was doing a little more yeah because yeah. this is this film is it goes a mile a minute and you you have no idea what's happening yes the wandering earth it's on <laughs> netflix at least in the uk uh if you can find a copy and watch it and please do let me know what you think uh, if for but, nothing else it's worth it just for a man with a minigun shooting at jupiter the movie <laughs> yeah and screaming screw you screw jupiter. you jupiter it's the mo- most powerful emotional moment in 2019 so far i think we can all agree so yeah go go and check it out uh, that's the wandering earth and thank you all for listening we'll, we'll see you next time thank you for watching space doc if you're interested in supporting the channel please do check out the links on the screen right now or in the description below for our patreon and channel membership services anything you can pledge goes towards improving our team and our equipment and allowing us to put together bigger and more exciting video projects for you guys on the channel